So please welcome, all the way from Goth Gothenburg, Edwin Brubeck from MappyFull.com. Oh, don't you dare look back, just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said, shut up and dance with me. This woman is my destiny. She said, ooh, ooh, shut up and dance with me. So how does it feel to see yourself on the screen? It's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, a bit nervous. It is a little weird. I hope I don't mess up. Okay, so you, like, I just listed off some of the projects you have. You have a ton of projects. How do you, uh, how do you manage all this? It's a good question. Uh, it's a constant struggle. Uh, yeah. It's kind of, you have to figure out what you're good at uh, okay. and try to optimize and only do that mm. and let other people do the other stuff. Okay. Uh, so kind of find your processes and, and stick to them. You find it exciting, I guess. In some yeah, way. yeah, I do. Okay. So uh, you, Niels Erik Jonsson, Johan Torsen, and Andreas Josefsson uh, just won your second consecutive uh, hacking startup, con or is a startup hacking contest together. So what is a hacking startup or contest and how do you win? Um, basically, it's, you have 24 hours to build a service, okay. an app, or a business of Seems some easy. sort. Yeah, okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and y the, the goal is to try to launch a business in 24 hours. Okay. Or an app or something like that. And you guys have won this twice? Yeah. Okay, exciting. <laughs> so uh, since you guys obviously were, you make a good team together, uh, you were designing a game, kind of like the old Snake game. Yeah. Uh, so, and that led into Mappyful, is that right? Yeah, we were out having lunch. Okay. Uh, talking about our next side project because mm -hmm. we really enjoyed the hackathon thing. Okay. Uh, and we thought that it would be great try to do this on our own, not on a, in a contest. Right. So the original idea was to build a game mm -hmm. uh, with snakes on a map. Uh, and that got us talking about maps. Uh, oh, okay. One thing led to another. I was and trying to see the connection, but I, it was hard. <laughs> now I get it. Okay, so I'm going to let you get to your presentation. So Thank you. good luck, and we look forward to it. Great. So first off, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, most of my days I spend in front of a computer instead of in front of a lot of people, so uh, it's a first for me. But Mapful, how many of you have heard about us before? Is there anyone? A few, yeah, that's interesting. So Mapful is a website or e-commerce service that allows anyone in the world with tablet, mobile device, or desktop to design, customize, and order posters based out of geographical data. Basically, that means you can buy beautiful map posters of where you met your wife, uh, where you went to high school, or where you live. And we kind of built an interface to do this. So the idea started at this great lunch restaurant in Gothenburg. Um, we knew we wanted to do something. We had kind of an idea of what we wanted to do. And we had an idea of what kind of scope it had to fit into. Uh, so going from the, the, the snake idea on Google Maps started to get us talking to, uh, what can we do with maps? Google Maps, I, I assume most of you have used sometimes at least. And maps are kind of cool. They are both generic, but they still have a great personal value. You can take a map out of Malmö and show it to 10 people on the street, and each and every one, if they're from Malmö at least, will have some sort of personal connection to the map, where they live or where they work, or something that's personal to them, even though it's the same map. So this was kind of what got the ideas brewing. What can we do with this? Can we do something else with maps? So by the time we had coffee, I think we had a pretty clear idea of what we wanted to do. But we still had a few questions to answer before we could get hacking or get building Mapful. Is there a viable business model? And selling paper <laughs> is quite profitable, to be honest. So <laughs> we just needed to figure out, is there a partner that can do the printing and the shipping? And are the prices 
in that range so that we can sell it to someone and get a, a, a profit margin. We needed to figure out with the scale, because we knew we wanted to do something that had the potential of being uh, big. And can we make it happen? Are we allowed to use the data from Google Maps? Can we make it happen in the sense that do we have the time to make it happen? There were a lot of questions that were going through our minds before actually getting to the next part. Would anyone buy it? That's a good question. We knew that we wanted to buy maps ourselves from where we... I'm, I'm from Kuwait, I was born in Kuwait, and I wanted a map of Kuwait. You one is from Varberg, and he wanted a map from Varberg. So that was kind of how we validated if anyone would buy it. <laughs> so, the, so the next part was planning, or the, okay, let's do this part. And we had this idea of what we wanted to do. Uh, we know we had to make it super easy to use. Anyone should be able to use it. We know we had to do something that's quite easy to build, but still wanted to exceed the user's expectations. And we wanted to go global and scale fast. And the most important thing was we just wanted to do the, do the fun stuff. As we said before, I have a lot of different projects going on, and so does all the other founders of Mapperful. So starting out, we knew we had to adapt some kind of principle. And this word, I think most of you know this word, but in a different context, judo. It's kind of my favorite word nowadays. If you go back to the principles of judo, it actually means maximum efficiency with minimum effort. And for us, that means that in order to only do the fun stuff, we have to spend a lot of time doing the boring stuff first, so we don't have to do them later or ever again. In the case that, for us, we needed to automate everything. Everything possible. That means getting rid of the accounting, getting rid of the legal, getting rid of the marketing, the content creation, and the production, and the logistics, and everything. So every hour we spend on Mapful could have great impact on the sales and the results. So the next part was building it. And the building philosophy was judo. Getting a lot of things done with minimum effort, but maximum effect. We wanted to track about everything, everything that we could. How do our users react? What do they do? In which order do they do it? How much time do they spend doing it? So we added metrics for about everything, everything you could think of. and keeping it clean. We know a project, if you're trying to build it this fast, it, it gets quite messy quickly. And we needed to keep all the things to a, a bare minimum so we could maintain them as well. So launching Mapful was the next part of it. Or the let's hope it doesn't break apart. We launched it to our friends and family first by posting on our personal Facebook walls, one post each. And in the first 24 hours, we had about 10,000 visitors. In the first two weeks, we'd been featured in 30 magazines and blogs, both physical and digital. And in the first two months, we had customers in 50 countries and had sold a couple of thousand of maps, which was 
originally we had set up a sales goal that were, if we sell 50, it's been worth it. <laughs> so we were quite impressed. And we were getting a lot of media coverage. So these are some of the sites that picked up Mapful in the first couple of months. And in the smack middle of, of this, me and my co-founders were like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, we, I, I think it's safe to say that none of us had anticipated in what kind of pace things would move. But we were ready. We were, we, we'd built things to scale. So it worked. It didn't break. Uh, but the next part of it was to, what do we no, do now? How can we harness this kind of movement or momentum, if you will? So quite quick, we started optimizing, also known as the, well, it didn't break part. <laughs> and optimizing is about making good greats, if you're lucky. <laughs> so one of the parts is to evolve your profit chain. Where do you make your money? Is there a way to increase your profit margins? Is there a way to if, uh, drive more sales? Is there a way to um, get better partners to do other things with more volume from orders and stuff? Understand the metrics. As I mentioned earlier, we, we measured everything. So we had the, a ton of data, but we needed to figure out what to do with it. And I'm pretty sure that you, if you go online and start Googling on things, you can find sources saying contradicting things about pretty much everything. So it's important to understand your own metrics. What does it say about your customers? And then develop more customizable options. Trying to meet our customers' growing expectations of what they can do with Mapperful. And lastly, A and B testing, which is probably something that most of you are familiar with and are doing on a regular basis. So our metrics were kind of interesting. Uh, we realized that we had kind of missed some important channels. We had an 8% conversion rate from traffic coming from Pinterest. We had a 4% conversion rate coming from Facebook. And the metrics allowed us to figure out what kind of collaborations and, and what kind of magazines that made profitable collaborations. So these are really valuable metrics, because if you go back to the judo principle, that means you have a better idea of where to spend your time. If we're going to make an effort on marketing, we should do it on Pinterest, because we have great conversion rates there. So learn your own metrics. We built some more features. We built a voucher system to allow more complex marketing possibilities to send vouchers and up sales and drive more uh, traffic through other uh, sources, referral sites. More poster sizes. One of the most common questions we got were, is there uh, a smaller size? Is there a larger size? Can I get this as a wallpaper? Uh, so we added that. And more themes, just to keep things more customizable. But through it all, everything we added starts out with figuring out how can we test if this is a good feature? And we did this through A and B testing. So one example is, this is a button that we had that said uh, free shipping worldwide. When we changed the text to or order now to get free shipping, we got an increase in engagement of 34%. Just that simple change. A feature that we tried out initially was having the possibility to add a pin somewhere on the map. Preferably where you live, maybe your, your office or something like that. So it was a, a quite complex feature, uh, if you're going down to the technical stuff. But 
what we realized when measuring this was the time spent designing your map increased quite drastically. I think it went up from five minutes to eight minutes, something like that. But it didn't have any impact on sales. Not positive, not negative, nothing. So the conclusion was that we had added more complexity to the process than value. There was no more added value, no more there wasn't any more customers or more sales, just longer process. So the conclusion was that we either built this feature wrong or it's unnecessary. So we, we removed it until we figure out why. So if you go back to the insights that we've learned so far, uh, we've been going since February, so it's about 10 months. One of the biggest insights we've had so far is that customizations are great as long as they add more value than complexity. So if there's one lesson I want to, to share, this is the one. Number two, automate everything possible to spend your time with things you enjoy and that have impact. And I, th I think that it's a common misconception about what things you can automate. For instance, accounting is, I assume, something that most of you find as boring as I do. Um, and it's entirely possible today to automate that from start to beginning. You have to sign off a few times a month, maybe. I think we spend about an hour a month just checking that everything is in order. Marketing is one other example. I think Leslie mentioned before that when working with customizable products, the user engagement increases drastically. So we realized that our customers wouldn't mind sharing their designs with their friends and family, showing off what they, what they bought. So we built a feature that generated pretty images for Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, everything based on their designs so that they don't have to do any Photoshop work themselves or wait for the poster to arrive, but instantly get a good shareable image to share with their friends. So a lot of content creation and blunt marketing can also be automated. As well as the legal stuff, there's also contracts with your uh, partners and, and uh, employees and everything. There's tools and stuff for that as well. So today we have four people running Mapful and we spend about an hour each a week, which I find is quite interesting because it's, it's sort of a necessary thing for us because we only have an hour left for this kind of business because we will run our other businesses <laughs> from eight to five. So Nils Erik, he runs a law firm and Andish and you one runs an accounting business and I run a, uh, two other companies. So we, ha we don't have any more time than on a one hour, but it is possible. There's also a lot of other things that you can automate. Um, drop shipping has been around for quite some time, also assuming that a lot of you guys are already doing it, but look into your own business, see if there's anything else. Do you spend a lot of time working with uh, spreadsheets? Spreadsheets are definitely automatable almost every single time. Every single project that I've been involved with in the web development agency, we can save hours a week, even a day, automating spreadsheets. Thank you. You can stick it there if you want. Excellent. You can turn around so that everyone can see you. Uh, really good job. I loved. Um, I love Map People, and it's one of the most beautiful websites I think around. Did you, were Thank you responsible you. for the design? Yeah, you were. So you did all the front end stuff. Front end and looks, design. Yeah. Looks really good. You guys should all check it out. Do you guys have any questions over there, uh, Mikael and Connie, for Edwin? <laughs> They're like, oh. What I actually like about your story is that you have the courage to, to just test and, and and try out different things. 
to what extent do you think that is uh, the general way of doing things in the Nordics with e-commerce? That's a good question. I, I, I think one of, of the things that connects both me, Nils Erik, you one another, and, and the other founders are that we spend a lot of time thinking, but not on that those kind of things. If we thought too much about all the risks and and how uh, how hard things would be, we would not get any of this done. Does that answer the question? Or did it? Okay. Any other questions, Mikael? <coughs> no more. W where where do you see Mapful scaling from here and going forward? Uh, I mean. Looking at it at a glance, I mean, it's as you say, you, you've taken something available, put a neat experience on to it, and, and a massive success in ten months. So, so how do you scale into to a sustainable long-term business, and how are you going to scale on the customer love that you are having? There's a few different ways of doing that. Uh, one way is g going to different markets. When we've done market efforts so far, we've targeted uh, geographical areas. For, for instance, Germany, and we. We lay out uh, all kinds of collaborations. We work with blogs, magazines, uh, focused in that area because we, we think that it gives more effects. That it's it's kind of a one plus one equals three scenario if you uh, show up and pop up everywhere for uh, this targeted user audience. Uh, but another way of scaling is we, we've been thinking a lot about the possibilities of starting using standardized products. For instance, selling uh, New York posters like there are other people doing, but it's it's hard, you know, doing the balancing act between uh, the personal product and volume, uh, and we're not sure what where we want to do. Uh, but I think that the, in the most uh, in the couple of coming months, we will try to scale up uh, in Asia, for instance which is an, an untested market for us so far. And, and also the US, we've only scratched the surface with what we can do there. So we have a lot of things to do still okay. to scale. Great. Edwin, thank you so much. Everyone, thank please you. give them a round of applause again. Thank you. This woman is my destiny.